Hey there, we're going to take a look at Whom AI's two-way voice chat again with uh, ability to save the conversation to a messages.json file and uh, continually summarize the conversation in real time. So as you know, Hume provides this 10 lines of code, which creates a two-way voice chat with interruptions allowed. So this is really wonderful, but I wanted to dive deeper into its classes and modify them so we can actually do more things with them. So I'm just going to move this summary and JSON file over here, and I'm going to start the script so we can see what's happening. And once I start this, I'll be talking with Evie, and then after that, I'll be right back. Hi there, how's it going? Oh, hey. Did you steer ready to chat? Well, I was wondering about quantum mechanics and if it really leads to many worlds interpretation like Hugh Everett suggested. Hmm, quantum mechanics is fascinating. The many worlds interpretation posits multiple realities branching out. It's a mind-boggling idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm always happy to chat about intriguing topics. Okay, let's go ahead and shut down the script. Uh, and as you can see, our summaries were being performed in real time, and we were also saving the message history in real time as well. So this actually works uh, with multi-threading. So in essence, you can modify this function to do anything you like currently. It's just doing summarization. So let's take a look at the code files uh, so to see how this works. Uh, the code files for this project will be available at my Patreon. And once you download it and install Hume, then you'll be able to run it. Uh, installing Hume is easy. You just install Hume microphone, but you do have to have uh, FFMPG installed. And there are some, also you need Microsoft Visual C++ 14 or greater. You can actually read through this, uh, but I also explained all this at great length in my previous video. It's this one right here, Real-Time Emotional Voice Interface, if you need additional uh, instructions on how to install it. Also, if you're a patron, you can download the code files to all my projects. And this is my website. Link will be in the description, echohive.live. So let's dive into the code. So when you install Hume EV and copy this bit of code that they provide right here uh, from the Python Quick Start, you see that it's only nine lines of code that makes this work actually right here this is the original code and but it's pretty opaque and uh, you really don't know what's going on and where's the chat history for example so that's why i dug deeper into microphone interface and actually at the chat client you can see that this is where the messages are being managed so i just manipulated this modified it so to speak i copied this into a file called chat up chat client up high and modified it so that it saves uh, the chat file to uh, messages, it's chat history to messages.json. I have also copied the microphone interface.py, which we looked at, and then modified it to import actually chat client from our file, chat underscore client. And then in the main.py file, I modified it so the microphone interface is not imported from Hume, but actually from this module that we have created, microphone interface.py. And I've added a multi-threaded function, which we are running in a separate thread to continually summarize, which utilizes my OpenAI Unify class, which I've talked in many previous videos. It just has many useful uh, methods, simply just to uh, simplify our life when making our calls to OpenAI API. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, how I was able to achieve this. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the code. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I, what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Like I said, I found the microphone interface and I knew that I saw that it was referring to a chat client. So I copied it here and actually modified it to actually detect to see if there's a pending assistant message and finalize it before adding a user message. So what happens is that, so this socket messages, there is an async continually receiving messages. First of all, Hume uh, sends, shows us the messages of assistant bit by bit. So usually speaking, they don't come in in chunk, full chunks like this. Usually every sentence is divided. 
and I wanted to combine them. So that's why we're doing this here. We check if there's a pending assistant message. Uh, we initialize the current assistant message to empty. We check for it. If it's user role, then we add the user message to the messages list. Otherwise, if it's assistant, we check if there's no pending assistant message, we start one. If there's a pending assistant message, append to it because this message is the message text and continually can contain assistant role, multiple turns in a row. So the rest of the code is actually as it was in the original class, but right here, we open a messages.json file at every turn in the conversation and we finalize any pending assistant messages as we have done right here. Current assistant message plus message text so that we can save it cumulatively. So we have nice alternating user and assistant roles. That's what we have done over here. So those are the only modifications and this file will be available at Patreon. So once this was done, I, I actually, of course, copied the contents of the original class into a new file called chat.client.py. And since microphone interface uses it, I changed the import from, so this was being imported from Hume, but I changed this to import from the chat underscore client module, which is our file. So that's the only change that was done to microphone interface. And originally the microphone interface was imported from Hume, but I changed it to import it from our microphone underscore interface file. Okay, so the only files that are necessary here is the chat client main and the microphone interface.py and OpenAI Unified, of course, to perform the summarization. And in the main.py file, so let's compare the original, original file from documentation to the one that we have modified. As you can see, the, this is the code from original documentation. And it largely remains the same right here. There's really uh, no difference. I just modified it so that it gets the API key either from an environment variable or you can enter it here. And there is really uh, not much else different, except of course, I did allow for user interruptions, uh, which is just a parameter. But here I've defined a function, which is gonna use our GPT calls, which is important from OpenAI Unified. I set the streaming to false, so we don't see anything in the Terminal, usually it's default to set to true. Uh, with streaming responses, I set model to GPT 3.5 turbo because we are going to summarize every five seconds and just setting the API key here. And in this conversation summarizer, I defined another two different functions within it. You can actually do this. It's cool. I also wanted to show you that. So the summarized conversation is just going to open up a conversation file, read it and use the summarizer, which is an instance of GPT calls to just simply summarize the conversation and return the summary. And summarize periodically is actually continually check, continually run and summarize the conversation, open the file, right? Call this function and then write it to summary.txt file as we have seen. And I return the summarized conversation and summarize periodically. So because the conversation summarizer returns that. So this is cool. I didn't actually know that you can define multiple functions within a function. I believe this is what they say, functional programming. So instead of having classes with methods, you can have functions with multiple functions underneath it. So now what we need to do is we have imported thread from threading. We want to run it as a separate thread. So this is what we're going to do here, right? We're going to start it. We're going to initialize the thread and start it. Once we do this in line 29 and 30, that means this is just going to run in parallel. Even though this is happening, this will also happen continually. Op read this file and summarize it in the summary.txt. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. But here we need to call a target for this thread, which is going to be a function. So we call the conversation summarizer, but it has two functions in it. We actually call the second element in it. So summarize conversation is the zeroth element and summarize, sorry, uh, it's yeah, we are actually calling the summarize periodically, which is the uh, first element, which is the second, but zero and one, right? That's why we can actually index it as one. So this is our summary thread and we start it. And so this will allow us to continually summarize. So let's see this in action again. And before before uh, doing this, actually, I do want to mention that you can modify this to do, for example, entity extraction if you want it or do something else entirely. You can run another thread to do a more extensive summary, for example. Feel free to change the timing of this. Like it's currently set to summarize every five seconds, okay? And uh, just take a look around. You know, this chat client, you can really, you really have a lot of control over the messages. You can do other things here as well. I will also include the original.py because this is, this is the original code from the documentation, but main.py 
is the one that actually we are using. So again, let me put the summary to one side and messages to here and run this and let's have a conversation again. Hey there, I've, I've recently listened to a podcast with David Deutsch, and he was, seems convinced that Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation is really the only way to interpret quantum mechanics, uh, like uh, such as double slit experiment. What do you think? Mm, interesting topic. Many Worlds interpretation is quite a mind-bending concept, especially in quantum mechanics, like the double slit experiment. Have you delved deeper into this theory before? Actually, yeah, I've considered it many times, but you know, I'm not sure how to which one would be the best approach or interpretation. I hear you. It's totally understandable to feel unsure about which interpretation to lean towards. Exploring different theories and interpretations can be quite a journey. What aspects of the many worlds interpretation intrigue you the most? Okay, I'm going to stop it here. We are using the default model. And you can actually set here, I believe, right here, configuration. Oh, yeah, at bitclient.net, you can set a config ID. You can set all that stuff up in your Hume AI playground and actually enter the config ID. For example, use Opus or GPT-4, which is going to make for a better conversation. But I just wanted to demonstrate how we are appending the assistant cumulatively rather than this would have made actually four or five assistant messages. And also the summaries are being performed every five seconds as we have instructed. Just wanted to demonstrate that one more time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.